I'm going to talk to you about technology today. So I always like to start my presentations with a selfie. So if you could indulge me for a moment. Thank you. You'll be able to see me on social media later. You can see yourself there. So thank you very much for inviting me along today. I'm very excited to be here and to talk to all of you amazing girls. And shout out to all the girls who've presented here today, who've done an amazing job. So being very brave coming on stage. I agree. Go sisters, awesome stuff. So, uh, my, my, I have a nickname. My nickname is Juwella and I'm a superhero. So, just so that you know. Now, what do I do and why am I here? So, uh, um, I, I do a couple of things. So, I'm an entrepreneur. I run two companies and I also teach information technology at university and I'm a researcher, so I do lots of different things. What I love most about my job is every single day is different and I never know what will happen each day and that's pretty exciting. Literally one week ago, I was in Europe. I had meetings at the European Commission and I was sitting with people in business suits and very important things. And I was even doing a photo shoot in Zurich last week. I mean, life is very unusual and I never thought I'd ever say that. So for me, some of the best things in life happen when they're not planned. So be open to opportunities. I've heard that message a lot today. So what do I actually do? Well, I run my own company called Adroit Research and I teach people how to use software for research. And I love that because I get to meet lots of very interesting people. I also run a company called the Tech Girls Movement. So it's a non-profit company I set up a month, uh, about a year and a half ago. And it's a movement. The idea is I'd like you all to get involved. And what I do is talk to women, young women like yourself to try to get you thinking about a career in STEM. So either science, technology, engineering, or maths. Part of the reason why I do that is because in 2018, only a few years away, we won't have a third of the workforce that we actually need in information technology. I teach at university, as I mentioned, and I have less than 10% girls in my class, which for me is actually pretty boring. Um, but what I see is the girls that come through my classes do amazingly well. So I'm going back to schools and trying to inspire you um, from a younger age to get involved and come and join our movement. So about a year and a half ago, I actually ran one of the first Kickstarter campaigns in Australia and raised $5,000. And I went to companies with this idea of the Tech Girls are Superheroes, and I said, please, will you give me money? Turns out many of them did. Sometimes you just have to ask. And I raised about $80,000. So I got that money, and I put the campaign Tech Girls are Superheroes together, and I launched it on the 8th of March, International Women's Day last year. So with that, that $80,000, I printed 20,000 copies of this book, which there are copies available for you today for free, and if you don't get one, you can jump online and order. But I raised the money so that I can give them out to free, for free to all of you girls. And what uh, the campaign really is about is to show positive, positive female role models who work in STEM. So all of the women who are featured in the book, they're all women that I know, and actually three of them I did visit on my travels in Europe. Many of them are based here in Australia. But these are all women that I know who change the world with technology. They do amazing things every day, but they're just like you and me. So the concept of a superhero isn't that we're good at everything. I'm certainly not good at everything. But what I am good at is there's one very special thing that I find that I'm really good at. So I'd like you to have a think about, and I'll come back to this, think about what is your superpower? What is that one thing you're really, really good at that you can then um, bring into your life and make people's lives better? And for me, technology is very much about making people's lives better. It certainly shouldn't be making our lives more difficult. And part of the reason why we need more girls is because all of us use technology. So we should be involved in developing that technology we use every single day. And another part of the reason is diversity, as we've talked a little bit about today. Diversity is a really, really good thing. Um, we make better decisions, companies perform better. There's a whole bunch of reasons why we need to have diversity. Not just women, but all sorts of different groups represented. So I want to share a couple of my role models with you. So this here is a woman called Ada Lovelace. So Ada Lovelace lived in the 1800s, late 1800s, and she's actually the first programmer in the world. So I don't know if you know, the first programmer was a woman. So Ada was so smart, she was working with Charles Babbage on the analytical engine, and essentially the first computer or first calculator. Ada, what she did was she actually looked over Charles' notes, made comments and corrections, and actually improved his work, and she was a, a very smart um, forward thinker. We also have Grace Hopper. So Grace Hopper worked in the US Navy in the 1950s, and what she did was literally change the world of technology. 
So she invented what's called a compiler. So a compiler is a software program that allows people to talk to computers, essentially. So before Grace came along, the way we talked with computers was we would have these little paper cards that had holes in them, punched cards, and we'd essentially put them into the computer and talk to the machine that way. When Grace came along and invented the compiler, she created this computer program and essentially created computer programming in the modern era as it is today. So she revolutionized the way we use technology. I think that's kind of cool. A little bit before Grace, um, you, um, you may not have heard of, um, Hedy Lamarr. So Hedy Lamarr was a screen goddess in the 1920s, so she was in Hollywood um, movies. She actually created what's called spread spectrum, which is the basis for, basis for Wi-Fi. So the technology we're all probably using here today, I've been sitting there tweeting, um, is basically as a result of something that happened by an amazing woman nearly uh, pretty much 100 years ago. So these are three women that I look up to, and we don't often hear about them, but I think they're absolutely pioneers of our industry, and we should recognize and celebrate that and be inspired by that. So I've created some characters, so what I call archetypes. So I'm actually really sick of seeing these boring, old, outdated stereotypes of um, the people who work in tech. Usually they're boys. Usually they have big Coke bottle glasses and pants up to their armpits, and they eat pizza and drink Coke, and they sit in the corner. You've probably seen that. We see it in movies all the time. That's actually not the people that I work with. These are the types of people that I work with. So these are some characters I've created, kind of like the Spice Girls of IT, I guess. Um, we don't all like the Spice Girls, but it kind of works, because they're role models that we can aspire to and look up to. So on the left, we have Kayla, who's the artist, the art of fly, so she's very much into design and creativity. We have Swiss, the tomboy next along there, who likes getting under tables and putting all the cables together and things like that. We've got Pi in the middle, who's a daredevil, and she goes off to places where no one has gone before. We've got Navi, who's the um, is Index, as her superhero name, and um, she's the explorer, going to places where no one's gone before. And then on the end, we have Flash Drive, who's a little bit cheeky, and she likes to wear heels and travel first class around the world. So I actually find myself one of these different characters each day, but really they do represent who I see working in the tech industry and the people I see every day that inspire me. So hopefully you're inspired by them as well. Let me talk very quickly about Tilly. So Tilly is seven, and not long ago her father was posting on Twitter how he was teaching his son to code. A friend of mine who also works in tech, she jumped on and said, why aren't you teaching your daughter to code? And he said, she's seven and she's not interested. So Twitter being the place it is, I jumped into the conversation and I said, how about I send Tilly a book? So he said, sure. Anyway, a week later, a blog post was online by Tilly's dad. And he was talking about how Tilly was so excited to get this book, and I always sign them when I send them out. And for her, it was kind of like a bit of a rite of passage. For her, as soon as she got the book, she wanted to start to jump in and learn how to program. Before that, she just didn't think it was for girls. She didn't think it was for her. So her dad talked about how I've kind of helped change her life, and by doing one little thing. So we can all do one little thing to make a difference. So I'm running a competition called the Search for the Next Tech Girl Superhero. It actually runs from the 1st of July until the 30th of September, so you still have time to enter. So girls, I hope to hear, get some entries from you. As of this morning, we have, I think, 25 teams registered. Two have come in literally while I've been sitting here. So it's over 80 girls who have registered for this competition. So what I do is you join up as a team, I match you with a mentor from industry, and then you work through a 12-week curriculum where you basically build an app, and you get to learn how to be a tech entrepreneur. So I'd love you to get involved, um, so you can jump on the website, which I'll leave at the end, and join up your teams. I would love to have you there, but there's a lot of competition, so be wary. Now, I'd also like to introduce you to Sarah. So Sarah won the competition last year. So Sarah is 12, and she goes to Melbourne Girls Grammar School. So Sarah, as I said, she's 12, and she's created an app, and her app is called Positive Penguins. So Positive Penguins is an app to help young people, many of you in the room, to deal with difficult emotional situations. So if I'm having troubles, how can I deal with that? Again, she's 12, and she's sold 20,000 copies of that app already. Pretty cool, huh? So that's why she won, it's kind of obvious. She's pretty amazing. Now, Lily Scout. Uh, Lily is actually one of our ambassadors this year, and she goes to Mountain Creek State High School. She's also 12, and she's doing a new webinar series for me. And the reason why is because two years ago, there was a startup weekend at the Sunshine Coast. Lily competed against the, the adults, and she came second with her idea. So she was, a, I think she was 10 at the time. And then Lily, last year, actually ran the first ever kids startup weekend in Brisbane. 
which for me, I think that's pretty amazing for a 12-year-old. So now she's doing a webinar series with a whole bunch of amazing tech women from a young person's perspective and interviewing them. So you'll be able to see them very soon on our webinar channel. So I told you I would come back to the question, what is your superpower? So I'll let you have a think about that. So just to finish up, one thing I am doing with um, a lot of schools at the moment is what's called digital humanitarianism. So I'm spending time going out to schools and teaching you that you don't actually have to get on a plane and go to somewhere like Nepal to actually help people in need. There's a website here, and I will, you'll have the details up on, um, I'll share my slides, um, called codeschool.com.au, and there's some really nice instructions where you can go on and literally help change the world in real time by mapping out parts of the world that have been hit by disaster. Um, you have an hour in the morning, you can jump online and actually really make a difference around the world. So I'd like to leave you with that message. So really, I'm not sure we can see the slide there, but I'd like you to in be inspired by today and inspire all of those around you. So thank you very much for having me.